Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. It's been a while, but I'm glad to be back. And this time I'm back with something that I think is really cool. The leader of the Bad Batch himself, Hunter. Now we just got word of the Bad Batch's release date for their new show. It's gonna be of course on May the 4th, and I'm really excited for it. That news kind of propelled me to actually finish this thing that I've had in progress for at least over a month now. This one posed an interesting challenge because it's got some uh, different kind of paint schemes and paint details and we're gonna be using some other techniques to paint this guy. So stick around, I'm gonna show you everything that I did to finish this helmet. Now like most of my helmets, the base is gonna be 3D printed. You can find both the 3D prints and the 3D files for this helmet in my shop online. Be sure and check out the description for that. I like to cut my helmets into three main pieces just to make it easier to fit on the bed as well as minimize the chance of a massive print failure if you were to print the whole thing in one piece. So the first step is gonna to be to assemble those pieces. And we wanna do it in a way that ensures this helmet is gonna be sturdy and stay together. So what I like to do is first sand the edges of the helmet so that we get some nice joins between the pieces. We don't want any uh, gaps or open space. That really is gonna make the process a lot more difficult. And doing this is gonna save us a lot of time. After I've sanded down all the edges, I like to take a soldering iron, which is basically just a really hot pen, and weld the inside seams together as I use a CA super glue on the edge itself. Now the CA glue takes only about 30 seconds to a minute to fully harden and cure, but that soldering iron is gonna melt the inside seams of the plastic, essentially welding it together, and that's gonna provide a much faster seam. So this way we don't have to hold the helmet together for a minute with the chance of it sliding or misaligning as we're holding it. That soldering iron is gonna keep it in place a lot quicker. I like to follow up the inside seams of the helmet with some E6000 glue, just really glob it in in there, and that's gonna make a really strong hold, but it takes around 24 hours to fully cure. Once we have the helmet assembled, we need to start smoothing out the thing so it'll be ready for painting. Now for the smoothing process, this is kind of a newer technique that I use. You might have seen it featured in a recent Uncle Jesse video, but it uses SLA 3D printer resin. It's a di whole different type of 3D printing, but this resin is a liquid that when it reacts with UV light, it'll harden, and we're gonna use that to smooth out our helmet. Now here I just have some runoff resin from cleaning out the resin tray or just some scrap resin that didn't fully cure, like runoff. It really doesn't take a lot of resin for this, so, so I like to just use whatever resin I have laying around. For example, maybe it's a really ugly color that you can't really use that often, but it takes so little resin, I'd estimate you could probably finish at least a dozen helmets with a single thousand milligram container of it, which is about $30 for the US. But we're just gonna use a sponge brush to lightly brush over this entire helmet. As you're brushing it on, you wanna do it in kind of light coats. You wanna make sure that there aren't bubbles because those bubbles will actually harden and then you'll have like hard bubbles on your helmet, which don't look good. You wanna get the surface as smooth and consistent as you can. That way, when the resin hardens, you're gonna have a smooth and consistent surface to sand on. Now, as far as the number of coats, I only do about two per helmet. I'll lay one on and then harden it for a bit and then lay the second one on. And that's usually when I start sanding for the finished helmet. You wanna be careful to avoid any detail areas. For example, I did not put any resin in the three uh, vents on each side of the cheek. Since it is a liquid, it'll like fill in and it'll be really, really hard to sand the hard corners. So I just opted to uh, leave those empty and fill those in with another method. Where this resin really shines is just covering a large amount of surface area that doesn't have a lot of details, which is most of the helmet. So this stuff is excellent. It doesn't smell like some of the other resins that I've used in the past. And it isn't a two-part mixture that you can possibly get wrong. So it just makes things infinitely easier without the bad smell or the complications of other types of resin. Now, like I said before, this stuff cures and hardens from ultraviolet light, which you can either get a UV lamp and cure this by hand, set it like in a box filled with UV lights, or what I usually just do is set it by an open window, like rotating it every day or so, because the ultraviolet light from the sun is actually gonna harden this as well. Like I said, you need to rotate it because the areas in direct sunlight will harden a lot faster than areas without it, so you don't want one half of your helmet hardened while the other half is still kind of tacky. But after two coats of this stuff, we'll let it fully harden for a few days, and then we can start sanding. Now I was kind of a big dummy here because I didn't wear a respirator when I started hand sanding this thing. You definitely want some kind of lung protection for this because 
the particles of this resin once sanded get really fine and you definitely don't want to be inhaling this stuff. That said, I use a 120 grit pad of sandpaper and I just kind of hand sand it very lightly all the way around just to kind of smooth out the helmet, get up all the rough spots from the resin or the high spots and just do kind of a general first pass of the helmet with some sandpaper. You could see some areas on top of the dome like where those layer lines are really heavy, still kind of need some more work, but that's okay. This is just gonna be a first pass of the helmet. And we're gonna shoot for getting around like 80 to 90% of the layer lines. The next step is gonna be adding some filler primer, kind of just doing a first over general coat of this stuff. It's gonna fill in some of those layer lines, not a lot because we're only gonna do one coat but it's also going to help us identify spots that still need a little bit more work. This resin technique isn't perfect the first time around and we definitely didn't do as much sanding as we need to. And this filler primer is gonna help us identify spots that still need more work. So now that we've identified our spots that still need a little bit more work, we're gonna use a product called Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. You know, I've used this stuff in a lot of other helmets and it's just a great tool all around. Once it's hardened, it's not as hard as the resin, so it's easier to sand, and it's pretty easy to apply as well. You can see I'm just applying it all over the spots of the helmet that still need a little bit of touching up. I'm using a glove, because I don't want any of this stuff on my fingers, and I don't know if you can see it, but I have a respirator on, because this stuff is kind of smelly. The bondo will take about four hours to fully cure. At that point, it'll be hardened, and we'll be ready to sand it, hopefully revealing a much smoother helmet. Okay, it's time to sand again. This time I'm still using the 120 grit sandpaper. I'm only gonna move up in grit to smoother sandpaper when I'm happy with the finish of the helmet. But for now, 120 works great for getting the Bondo sanded down without taking it all off. You can see I'm wearing a respirator for this and you definitely wanna do that because as you can see from my uh, smock there, I'm getting Bondo dust everywhere. You definitely don't wanna be breathing that stuff in. It's very bad for you. Once I've finished sanding it, I'll go over it again with some more filler primer to just kind of help identify any other spots that I might have missed again. And you can kind of just repeat those two processes, filler primer to help fill in and see spots that you might have missed, and then Bondo for the heavier stuff to fill in those places. But once you're happy with the smoothness of your helmet, you can go up in grit and just give it a once over with like a 300 grit or even higher if you want. But once your helmet is perfectly smooth, you'll be ready for painting. Okay, for the first layer of paint, I'm gonna be using a flat black primer. This is gonna act as a nice base for the rest of our paint, and it's gonna color in a lot of the helmet for us. We don't need a lot, just one or two coats will completely cover this helmet. So now came the first real challenge, and that was with the other colors of the helmet, like the red and the white. If we look at the character, it doesn't have very like crisp, clean lines like some other clones do. It looks kinda of like it was thrown on or rubbed in with chalk, and it just doesn't have hard defined edges that you could like tape off and spray paint. So what I thought about doing is a technique called dry brushing. It's used a lot for like weathering. If you want to uh, like weather the edges or the corners of something to make it look older, you dip your paintbrush in some paint, but then you kind of like rub out a majority of the paint before you start working on your piece. And that's kind of what I did here. I got a kind of coarsely brushed chip brush and some white paint. And I'll dip the edge of the paintbrush in the paint, but then I'll kind of stipple it on some cardboard just to kind of get rid of a majority of the paint so that when I lightly brush it on the helmet, you get some nice like coarse streaks and it just looks really rough, like you rubbed it in with chalk. I have the tape on there to kind of act as a guide for the helmet since there is kind of a rough design. It doesn't have the hard edges like I said, but the chalk certainly follows a design for the helmet. And so I just kind of taped that out so I didn't go over any edge. And I, I tried not to get too close to that edge so it wouldn't have that defined line where it begins and ends. Overall, I really like the paint scheme for this helmet. It's definitely got a Vietnam vibe, which from season seven of the Clone Wars, it definitely felt like that. And I hope kind of that's the case for the new show that's coming out. Vietnam was pretty pretty rough, so I hope some of that is reflected in the show. Some of the, so maybe we get some darker themes or some darker story arcs. Who knows? We'll see. I'm excited. I'm sure they'll do a great job on it. And I'm really excited to learn more about these characters. So since we use such little paint when applying it to the helmet, it dries fairly quickly. So I'll let it dry for maybe about an hour before I take off the paint and start working on the red parts of the helmet. The red was pretty similar to the white, just following the same dry brushing technique. And there's only a few spots that are red. Once that's applied, I'm gonna go over the helmet again and just add the, like, the white weathering details that are on some of the edges of the helmet and 
that covers some of the red. But once that's done, I'm pretty happy with the paint job on this helmet. There's a few more things to do, so let's take care of that quick. So now I want to tackle the visor. And normally for this, I would want to use like a grinding shield that's tinted for this, but they always seem to be out of stock. I can't tell if it's from you guys finishing helmets so much or from the increased demand for face shields. So I thought for this one, I'd use an alternative method since the face shields are kind of hard to find and people might not have the option for them. So instead of a grinding shield, I'm just gonna be using some black window tint. Now this stuff is not like a hard plastic or a visor material, but it will serve the same purpose as those face shields. And for this, all we really need to affix it to the inside of the helmet is some duct tape. It's a lot easier to apply, and in this case, the helmet is just gonna be for display, so it doesn't actually need to be worn. And this is a much simpler option than trying to get a face shield cut to size and held in place inside the helmet. And from the outside, you can hardly tell the difference. Plus, this window tint is a lot more available. You can get a big old sheet of it for like 10 bucks, that should last you like over a dozen helmets. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you're able to make your own Hunter Bad Batch helmet now. Remember to check out the links in the description for the 3D prints or the 3D files. Let me know if you're excited for the show and what helmet I should do next. Until then, thank you again for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one.